Hey everybody, where's Wally here? Well, it seems I messed up. The uh, bright trail is Polaris. Well, we know where the images were taken, and the initial ones used were captured when, when the ISS was over Zambia, and it was at 16 degrees south, and Polaris is not at all visible from that location. Seems I made a few errors identifying Polaris, and every flat earther was right onto it pulling me up. They also provided all the correct information to me. <laughs> yeah, I know, I can hear you laughing. Yeah, you're quite right. It was actually Movie Vertigo and Wolfie 6020 and some other globagandists that pointed out my fail. Look, I can blame my location because from down under here where I look, I can't see Polaris, so I have no idea whether it's real or not. I don't know what those stars look like. I can also blame Stellarium as it only goes to 99.99 kilometers and that meant that Polaris was hidden when viewed to 99.99 kilometers at 16 degrees south of the equator but if you go up to 420 kilometers above the surface that changes things well fancy that oh and then of course I mislabeled Polaris on that star trail whoopsies sorry about that guys so here is what it should look like well now that we've got a claim the burden lies on you to demonstrate the proof that the thing that you're claiming is true. In a field full of stars that are all rotating, it's very likely that you could just pick a close match to it and we, we wouldn't know that it is or is not Polaris. You just found a star that matches the observation of where it's supposed to be and claim that that one's Polaris. And how would we know that that is Polaris? Wolfie and Movie Vertigo pointed me to a technique called plate solving. That was absolutely brilliant. So I cropped the earth off of the uh, original image, then I just tossed the star field at the plate solver and voila, way too easy mate. Don't sit there and whinge and say all you got is a compass and a P900. You have all these tools at your disposal, now please go and use them. It not only correctly labelled where Ursa Major and Ursa Minor were, and Polaris, but it told me just how wide in degrees that field of view was. So once I knew exactly where Polaris was, and I found, by a little trial and error, exactly where the centre of rotation was, and I marked that with a little arrow up there in the top left, well, the rest was rather easy. So this allows me to answer Anthony's questions. First point, well, maybe I did misidentify Polaris, but now I've got it exactly right. And of course, Polaris was not the centre of rotation of this ISS star trail. Now, second point, I did a little bit of the old pixel counting. I love doing this sort of stuff. Never really see many flat earthers doing this, though, do we? From the plate sole, it told me it was 72.2 degrees across the image. I went, oh, beauty, when I saw that. Because that now means I can figure out a scaling factor, which was 10.25 pixels per degree. Now, armed with that, I can measure the distance in pixels and... Then I can figure out how many degrees from the center point of rotation to Polaris. And guess what it turned out to be? Well, I measured 51.8. What is it actually? 51.6. So less than one degree, I got it. Now, why is 51.6 special? Well, because that's the inclination of the ISS orbital plane. Fancy that. Well, I'm going to call that a huge win, Sleeping Warrior, Mitchell from Australia. What are you going to do about this one now? You're going to model it with a modelling piece of software and then pin the star that's in the right place at the right time and say, that's Polaris. How the hell can we tell that? We can't see any of the constellations, but they're all blurred out because it's time lapse. Gee, you've got to love these guys, don't you? They say, how can we see this when it's all blurred out because it's a star trail and the very next frame cuts to where the single image is? Uh, Anthony, you get the single image and you run it through a plate solver and it tells you exactly what you're looking at, which is what I did. Yeah, again, mate, there's no way of knowing that that is Polaris just because you say there should be a star that arises over the horizon. Let's be honest, that could be easily claimed and faked or just coincidental. There is no way of knowing. We can't tell because the perspective is different, isn't it? You can't tell. We can't tell. But we're definitely not going to take your word for it. Wolfie said to tell you that this is done using what they call a blind plate solve, 
which means no information is given to the solving software but an image with some stars in it and the software has to compare it to every known possible star position seen from Earth and find the best match. So when it does come back with a match, you know that is a perfect match. So it really, really, really has to be Polaris. Sorry about that, Anthony. So sorry. Explain that, matey. Now, Anthony, a star trail has a lot of information in it. Now, if you understand what you're looking at, then it's really easy to tell them apart. Yeah, if you know what you're doing with star trails, they do tell you a lot, and it's how we know that this video is fake, dude. You're about to trip yourself up in the most catastrophic way ever, and it's delicious. You come across thinking that you know what you're talking about. You've clearly never done any star trail videos, because if you actually took and captured your own footage, you'd realise that this is completely and utterly fake. <laughs> So, Sleeping Warrior, you think I've never done star trails, eh? Well, mate, yet again, you failed at research. My channel has them all over the place. And here is one I did to poke that little guy. What's his name? I can't even think who he is now. Uh, super Rats? That's right, Super Rats. Just for him. I, think I don't know. But where on the southern facing star trail are those? Oh, dear. So what you're saying is there's three stars that are on the star trail that don't appear on the other one. Mm, what might, what reason might that be? It could be that it's because it's being taken from a different position and therefore the stars are different. But there is another plausible, logical and more likely explanation for where the stars appear or don't appear from. And it might be the fact that it might be taken from somewhere that's got very low light pollution and you're able to see more stars. The simple answer is there are three stars in one image because probably it's taken in a position in a from a position where there is less light pollution and better equipment giving the impression that there is a different rotation but actually you don't prove that it's a logical inference but it isn't proof sorry light pollution can do the exact same thing okay Anthony let me see if I've got this straight you're saying those three stars on the ISS star trail don't show up on the other one because the other one's a bit duller. But did you think then that that means that all of the ones on the duller one should show up on the bright one? Because that's how it works in reality. So let's have a look. Hmm, what about these couple here? Do they show up over there? No, they don't, mate. Sorry. But one thing that does happen the same on, on the ISS that happens on Earth is time-lapse photography and long exposure photography. And we both know how they work. Obviously, whereas Wally does not know how they work, but they require an incredibly still, motionless environment. Otherwise, you get jitters and it messes up your, your time-lapse or your long exposure. The reality, of course, is time-lapse and long exposure photography do work exactly the same in space as they do on the ground. But you just don't understand it, where's Wally? And this is what this is going to demonstrate right now before your very eyes. The International Space Station, as we can see on screen right now in Wolfie's demonstration, shows that from the frame of reference of the International Space Station, it appears to be not rotating. This is so that you can demonstrate the stars turning in the background to support your narrative. The reality is that the International Space Station is continuously rotating because it's falling around the Earth whilst maintaining a central point to get the star trails that you claim that you get. Well, for that to happen, you've got to work out how are they doing that. We know the International Space Station controls its attitude with four gyroscopic um, attitude controllers. And for them to be doing this, that creates vibrations, it creates movements, and as we can see from this article, it is that sensitively controlled that the mission control are able to detect when the crew wakes up from the movements that the crew makes inside the vehicle. Those same movements are going to destroy your time-lapse photography. Well, let me just stop you there, Anthony. You know, guys, the whole time Anthony's been wobbling on about this, uh, how sensitive a star trail is and you can't even walk past it, I was almost wondering if he was going to say, you know, even when an astronaut walks past it, it's going to upset it. And he almost pretty much did say that. Anyway, Anthony, what I don't think you considered was just how sensitive are the measuring instruments on the uh, four reaction wheels that control the attitude of the ISS. 
And if you have a look at this where they actually provide the data, they're providing it to one hundredth of a degree. And the rate changing and the other column is to a thousandth of a degree per second. So it seems like they're measuring it to an incredibly sensitive, so maybe that's why they can pick up when there's extra movement. Did you ever consider that, that they might be able to, de to detect it? So maybe what you need to do is work out just what amount of vibration does upset a star trail. Now you're going to have to calculate that, but I mean, I haven't done it myself, but I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say, I think it's probably going to be much greater than a hundredth of a degree. What do you think, Tony? So the only one of two things is true. Either Don Pettit's claim that you manually held your camera and moved it around with the spaceship as it went round the Earth is the way they did it. Well, try repeating that yourself and let's see your results with short proximity or long proximity for um, time lapse just over 10 seconds. You will not be able to do it because you can't do it by hand. So Anthony, you think if you stuck a camera on a tripod mount on a motorized mount and spun it backwards for 11 minutes that you wouldn't just end up with a a super cool star trail being generated in the opposite direction it wouldn't be wobbly you do know these mounts are designed to track the stars and just simply remove the earth's rotation from it don't you and to do that they have to be very precise and have no wobble you really just have to stop kicking your know, tripod when you're doing star trails mate and harry callahan thanks very much for pointing this out to me mate yes uh, anthony the camera is totally locked to the ISS because you can see the external pieces that are visible do not move at all in relation to the frame of the camera. So it's just the ISS turning, mate, not the camera within the ISS. Thanks, Harry. Or the other alternative is that the spacecraft is falling around the orbit of the Earth whilst maintaining a four-axis gimbal um, a gyroscopically controlled gimbal that gives it its attitude control but it's that sensitive that if they can detect that the the the, the orbit or the messing around of the, of the um, crew inside the uh, the vessel if they can detect it them same detections are going to ruin your photography <coughs> however it's controlled isn't going to be accurate enough or smooth enough or controlled enough to get long long photo uh, long exposure or um, time lapse photography it's complete and utter joke. Anything from this International Space Station is nonsense anyway. There might be a tin can flying around up there, but there aren't humans in it. Whoa, hold on there, Anthony. Did you just say what I thought you said? This is almost as bad as, um, what's his name, Nathan Oakley saying that there is a pressure gradient. You just admitted that there's something up there. Because you better go and watch my other video. I think it's in the description and up in the top left corner. Right corner. Mate, it does not matter whether there are humans on the ISS or not. The very fact that it is there proves a globe. Oh, thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You hear that, guys? Anthony says there might be a little metal box up there, but there's no humans in it. Now, as long as there's any sort of metal box in orbit, it can only be in orbit if there's a planet to orbit around. Well, look, now I'll leave you with this clip from Warsop. I have no idea who Wasop is, but I tell you what, they have some of the best and the rarest footage from space. Well, this one is from the ISS a few weeks back. As you can see, the crew capsule is still attached. Well, that's kind of rather special. So just sit back and enjoy this one. And Level Earth Observer, while you're sitting back and enjoying it, can you point out where the bog rolls are, please? I still have yet to see them. Oh Anthony, that's precious. You want me to delete my video because I said there was a few mistakes? Well, I've got a way of fixing that. I'm making a video without mistakes. But you do realise you're setting yourself up for an impossible precedence there, don't you? You know what a precedence is, Anthony? So what are you going to do when I prove to you that what you have said is just wrong? Are you going to delete your video? Are you going to get Mitchell to delete his video because he faked the drone hover? So there you have it, Anthony. I've proved conclusively, without a shadow of a doubt, that this star is actually Polaris, and it is exactly the right angular displacement from the ISS at 51.6 degrees, matching the inclination of the orbital plane of the ISS. 
So I don't really think you've got much left in the tank here, have you, Anthony? Well, okay, just go and find that delete key and you can delete it. Or better still, just leave your video up as a cautionary tale for all those who try to follow after you so they don't go down the same rabbit hole as Sleepy Warrior. You said that you could prove that it was neither the North or the South Pole. Have you done that? No. You picked a star, you claimed that it was Polaris, and you haven't been able to prove that it is. So until you can prove that the, the star that you picked was Polaris, it's just your claim, mate.